what are we doing? Lift time. All right. Um, I asked y'all how you wanted it done. And the everybody responded that they wanted it done rear only and front only. So this is your uh, rear Lexus GX470 coil spring conversion. Minor lift springs, yours may not be. Same process, doesn't matter. Uh, I will have one coming in from another guy locally that he wants uh, He wants me to just convert his to normal height springs. So uh, I will do that. But this one's going to be the most in-depth one that I've seen on YouTube. Somebody else may be more in-depth. I haven't found it yet. I'm going to show you each and every nut, bolt, and everything that you're going to pull off to get this done and do it efficiently. It's not, it's not hard. Um, basic hand tools. Um, get your vehicle off the ground. Having multiple jack stands and multiple jacks will help uh, because, as you can see, I've got the rear tires off the ground as long as I've got the differential in there. But if I let it down, well, one-handed, that's a little tough. <laughs> if I let it down without the tires being off of uh, the hubs, then it's going to, they'll touch. So tires will come off, it stays on the jack stands so that the vehicle is still in the air, and I can then use my jack to move my differential up and down as necessary. Uh, because I have spring compressors, you may not. But let's get started. Let's look at the tools you'll need. Some of the things that you're probably gonna want, some sort of pliers, they'll help you get the, uh, airline connections loose you're going to need a uh, flashlight maybe to see where the air spring clip is helps anyway uh, a trim tool to pull loose some of the clips holding airlines in a ratchet you're going to need a 17 and 8 no 19 and 21 millimeter sockets you're going to need uh the, i get the same usually in wrenches and a 12 millimeter for pulling the air compressor itself loose and then your conversion kit. Mine's an iBot Pro Truck Lift. Uh, you got the lower isolators and upper isolators and the bolts to hold them in and some zip ties to hold everything out of the way. And an impact gun. Impact guns make everything nice. So I definitely recommend the impact gun to uh, move things on along for you. At least getting the struts loose, it'll help. So let's get going. All right. Uh, first things first, uh, if you've been following me, you know that I've got a video on how to disable your air system. So you're going to want to disable that system uh, with your fuses to where it's not going to continue to fill air in these if somebody accidentally cuts your key on, etc. But this is your air compressor. And these airlines, they don't have to come loose from here, but they can. And then you've got one, two electrical connectors. 13 millimeter bolt and let me go around here. 13 millimeter bolt and you can see where your airlines run. One goes across to your passenger side and one is going to travel over to the top of this driver's side. So now that I've got that, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get this compressor out of the way get all of these off and that's your first step for me After breaking, uh, <laughs> breaking some of the clips on this compressor, it is 14 years old, so uh, I broke one. So instead of trying to save this one, since I have a backup, uh, if somebody wants it or needs it, uh, I went ahead and cut the lines. So once you cut those lines, just for the sake of having some extra room, 
All right, now you can go ahead and remove those two 12 milliliter bolts that hold that air compressor in, and let's get that dude out of here. If you're never going back to Air Springs, you can uh, sometimes list them on eBay and sell them, or you can chunk it. Just depends on what you like. Some of you guys on the GXOR Facebook pages might need them, so if you're going to chunk it, maybe offer it as a freebie if they'll cover shipping, because it's still a good part. little part just a squeeze tab some of your other electrical connectors and out comes your air compressor a bit to the side we come in here there's your clip. I know it's going to be shaky. I'm trying to hold this thing with one hand. <laughs> There's no good way to mount this. But I'm going to reach in there. Good wire hanger. You can see. I hope you can. All right, when I get this wire hanger, I just pull. And uh, now it comes to the retainer clip. That's all that's really holding in <laughs> the top of your spring. So, so now that it's gone, I'm going to get this strut out of the way. And uh, I'll disconnect the airline from the top of the air spring, and uh, you'll be good to go. Uh, that spring should come on out. Now that I've gotten all the air out, Now that that's gone, that hole is where the uh, upper isolator will go. And then the fun part um, is getting the lower isolator here because you have to thread in the nut and washer from the bottom side here and the bolt and the isolator going from the top. So a little bit of a booger, but this is where they'll sit. And then that hole where the spring just came out of, the middle one, is where the new isolator bolt will go in there and you'll thread in the nylon nut from the top. And uh, I gotta look back at the torque specs to see how much they are. Um, but yeah, that's where we move next after we finish taking the sway bar loose and getting this shock or uh, original strut out of the way. Once those are out of the way, then I can uh, focus on these uh, isolators. Yeah, my microphone's going crazy, so I'm sorry. I don't think it's gonna work, but uh, tie these out of the way with a zip tie. You don't need them anymore. There's a small, well, I can't even see them, but up in here, there's uh, two little air reservoirs that just help keep pressure on the uh, air springs. One of the lines runs to them. You don't have to get them out of the way. But follow this, unplug all these. So this is where that other air, the other airline would go. Uh, follow it all the way up to the top of that spring. Remove its clip. Thread this through or cut it since you don't need it. And uh, pull it out of the way. <clears throat> and then we'll disconnect the sway bar link on that side and take out that OEM strut. And then we will put the new springs in. So let's get to that. All right, before I move on to uh, uh, showing you how to get these top clips out of the air springs, I am going to go ahead and disconnect the struts on both sides. This might be a little loud. Uh, this one, 
I believe will be your 17, I think. Let's, let's bring them all over. There's just one bolt. It will be the 17 millimeter there, as well as on your sway or anti-roll bar, as some people call it. This will be loud every year. Mm. A 17 will fit right here on your the back nut on this sway bar. You're going to need vice grip to hold it on this side because mine's just spinning. Uh, it's old and worn out, so probably going to just go ahead and replace the sway bar link while we're in here. That's what I usually do. But uh, go ahead and get that out of the way. You can bump your shock out of the way. Take a uh, pry bar and slide it off of there. And uh, then you should be able to disconnect. Let's see if you can see it there. You'll disconnect here. Let's see if I can see what I'm doing. I can't. Yeah, man, not that. Good thing we don't need it, huh? No, I gotta have two hands, and I can't have two hands and hold y'all. So let's see if I can set you up. Woohoo! You're wobbly. Ah. All right, this this piece goes with this OEM shot. Cause that's what the zip ties for. Tuck this up and out of your way zip tied in place you will no longer need that all right now that we've got the struts i mean not the struts but the shocks and we've got the um uh sway bar links undone we've got the airbags out of the way time to start putting in the hardware to uh that'll hold the rest of it in for you so this is i hope you can even see this but that hole right there, I probably can't even show it all to you, but that upper isolator is going to sit just like that. I hope that's showing you. The problem with me showing it to you is I got to get my hand up and around and over, and I'm going to block you. But upper isolator goes right there. You've got a uh, bolt that goes through the isolator. Show you that. So this bolt goes through your isolator up into that middle hole, and then you've got a nylon nut and a washer to put on the other side of that and tighten down. Uh, I'll try to look up a torch spec for that, but both sides you got one on both sides to do. So let me get those done. All right, that's what the upper one will look like. An impact gun will do you a lot of good here. Here's the tricky part, and nobody wants to talk about this. Well. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. All right. This, if I can get this camera to sit right. Uh, there we go. That's where your lower isolator is going to go. Some kits won't even come with an upper isolator. The iBot does. Uh, but this is the booger. This is why it's so tough uh, to get this one to go is it's the way this is made this bolt has to come Oops. see <laughs> i've already dropped it i'm gonna get a magnet but i'll get a magnet after i try it with the other one so i can show you what's got to happen hey guys not so well not so loud. Alright, <laughs> right, I'm going to get my magnet just to help me get this one in here. So, something I guess I could have added to the list of tools you might need. Um, a magnet is always helpful. A magnet is helpful anyway. You never know. What you'll need a magnet for? Well, but anyway, I must push this magnet through. Hmm. 
Alright. Now, obviously I need the the nut that goes with that uh, on the other side because, see what happens, it'll just pull right through. So, that's the other, other aggravation. Getting the nut through there with the bolt and then, not only that, Once you get it through there, then you still have to hold it in place, slip the isolator over, and then get everything started. So, oh, uh, small note, these are 19 millimeter, both the nut and the uh, bolt. Um, so. That's how you'll get that on. Once you get that on, you get it tightened down. I'm not going to be able to get it all the way in here. But the lower portion of your uh, shot, I mean your spring, that's in here, and the upper portion goes in there. Uh, I will use a, uh, a jack on the other side to give myself some slack. So it'll push this down, it'll lift the other side up. That's why you unhook the sway bar. Because if you don't, this won't happen. If you're not changing out, I hope you can see this. If you're not changing out your uh, your shock, you still need to undo the lower bolt to give you flex in this uh, rear chunk and axle and everything. So there's your finished product on both of your isolators. I've done that to both sides. so. Um, let's look at, I'm going to try to do this without a, uh, without using spring compressors. I'm going to jack up this one side to give myself a little room on the opposite side. And I'm going to try and get that spring slide in there. Let's see how it goes. This is always easier with a friend if you have somebody uh, that can uh, push down on that one side for you. Let's see if I can get myself any room. No. If you're doing stock springs, it's not hard to get them to fit in there. These lift springs, I'm fixing to come back with spring compressors just to make it a little easier to fit. Alright. Yeah, I know the old adage, do as I say, not as I do. Don't put a bottle jack here. Get you a second helper to step and just push down on this axle because it's loose. That's why we took the sway bar off. I'm not going to use the spring compressor because if you have a second person. But, uh, she slips right over the isolator. Then your second person lets off as you line this up. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to let my bottle jack down, but you see how to work that. You see how that's going to work out. The second person steps on this axle, it tilts, your anti-roll, your, anti your sway bar is loose, so you can tilt that axle, and you can slip that spring right in there, and then they let off pressure, and you can let off pressure on the other side of the jack as well. So, uh, do as I say, not as I do here, right? So, uh, good luck. So should be pretty easy to do if you have a helper. If not, you can use a bottle jack, just not the safest. And that's what it should look like once you get both of these springs in. And then you're going to reconnect the, uh, come over here. Take, uh, I'm gonna use the new sway bar links like I showed you in this other video, but we're gonna reconnect our sway bar. We're going to put our new shock in and uh, Connect it back at the bottom, zip it all tight, and you have successfully put in a cool conversion from air system, air suspension on a GX470. This will also work on um, the uh, Sequoia. It's a little bit different. I guess I'll do a video on that as well. But uh, some people run a different bump stop just for more travel. Uh, 
I'm going to leave this bump stop for now and see how it does with this lift, this iBox system. Uh, so, let's get this thing buttoned up and see what it looks like. All right, so here I've got my new shock. The sway bar links are in. I've got my shop helpers being <laughs> crazy. Hey. And these springs uh, are both in. All right, got a little surprise for you. We're going to do a little mock-up with the uh, new wheels and tires, too. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I definitely appreciate uh, you sticking around. I am fixing to do a giveaway. I would like to uh, do something that's going to help out anybody that's looking at one of these. What I'm thinking... Molly panel. Uh, Victory 4x4 has a nice Molly panel that you can put right there. So my plan is we're going to do a giveaway of one of those. Here's how it's going to work. You have to be a subscriber. Uh, I would like you to like our Facebook page, JLM Auto Sales. Um, on the Facebook page, I will also post this video. You will be able to comment on that video. That's where I would like you to comment. So you're going to go from here. Uh, I would like you to comment your name uh, of your YouTube channel that you've subscribed to us with. And that contest is going to run through January 15th. So you've got two weeks. Share this video, like this video, uh, engage with us on this video, and then go to JLM Auto Sales. It's in Fosters, Alabama. We're near Tuscaloosa. That's where you're going to like the page, and you're going to comment on this post. You'll just see the YouTube link with the contest rules in it. So I know that this is going to be limited to those that like the Lexus GX470, uh, but I would really like to get into giving away a lot more uh, items uh, in the future. That'd be awesome. But J. Lamato Sales, which is one of my businesses, is going to front this giveaway. Uh, that panel's worth uh, $100 plus shipping. Uh, I will drop ship to the winner. That way I don't have to pay double shipping. Uh, but January 15th is the end of that contest. At midnight that night, if you haven't liked the Facebook page and commented your YouTube ne uh, name and subscribed to our channel, those are the three parameters to get entered. I will do a uh, random drawing on uh, the... Uh, on uh, anyway, it's just you put all the names in and it randomly pulls one. It's a software program. I don't know. It's one of the things. It's a generator. But uh, I will do that. I will video it and I will tag the winner. And then I will comment the winner uh, the next day after January 15th. So, again, thank you for being here. But let's check out this GX and see what it looks like. You're like a circle that floats around me, keeping me safe and sound. And when I fall, you've tied a rope to me. You're blessing me every day. I was down with an illusion, like a sparrow with broken wings. But now I shine with your reflection on me. Hey. I'm getting back up on my feet. Yeah.